Hello there and welcome again to another chemistry lesson. In this one we are going to look at organic chemistry, uh, specifically functional groups. Now what do I mean when I talk about functional groups? Well, functional groups um, is a, uh, refers to a collection, a collection of atoms or bonds, atoms or bonds with a predictive let's say collective predictive collective predictive chemical behavior okay so for now this might sound uh, somewhat like well, what do you mean okay but basically what we're trying to say is that it's a collection of atoms and if these atoms um, are bond in a certain way then we can expect the following chemical behaviors like for example um, is it a liquid at a room temperature what is its boiling point and um, um, does it increase um, uh, when there's more of these bonds, things like that. Okay, so um, the definition isn't that important. What is important is that you know the different types of functional groups that we get. Okay, um, what I'm going to do um, in this video is to show you the different functional groups and at the same time try and teach you a few additional things that will be useful later on. Okay. The first one we're going to look at is called al alkanes. Okay. Now, alkanes have the following structure. They have single carbon bonds. Single carbon bonds. Okay. And hydrogens. Okay, so basically, if I were to show you the general form, we would have a carbon connected to a carbon, connected to a carbon, connected to a carbon, okay, and, uh, and so you can see each carbon and then each carbon already has two, four valence electrons, so it's got another four there and these additional ones will all be connected to hydrogens okay so these will all be connected to hydrogens and this is a general form for alkanes okay alkanes will end on the suffix okay it will end on the suffix a n e okay and then just to give you an example so let me give you an example here an example is methane methane um, okay let's actually do ethane okay ethane has two carbons and therefore it has six hydrogens it's called ethane and the first thing I will uh, want to add here additional is that the ETH we will always use when we are working the eth prefix we will always um, use when we're working with two carbons so there's two carbons in the longest chain so it is called ethane okay the general formula the general molecular formula is for every carbon that we have we will have twice as many hydrogens because look here each carbon has at least two hydrogens so there will be two times as much hydrogens but then the carbons at the ends the and since there's only two ends the carbons at the end will have one additional each so there will be a additional to so for example uh, C 3 H 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8 
C10 if you want H22 double and add 2 these are all examples of molecular formulas for types of alkanes okay alkenes the next one alkenes alkenes has at least at least one double bond double carbon bond okay and uh, that means that somewhere in the structure we have you write it like this we have a carbon double bonded to another carbon and whatever else whatever other carbon chain is here we will represent the rest with an R okay it's called a substituent group okay the rest will be just represented by R and can and it's probably just a normal alkane structure okay and um, now you'll see that in this case we still have one two uh, sorry one left here okay one left here and one left two left on this side so this one will get hydrogen and hydrogen so we've got two four six eight and this one has two four six eight and of course this can also just be another substituent group and so can these all be I can actually all of them can be substituent groups it can be number one number two Let's write it as footnotes uh, or as accents and four okay all of them can be substituent group just somewhere we have a double carbon bond okay uh, for this we will use the suffix so these will end on ene alkane ends on ane alkenes ends on enes okay I'll use the next number is a carbon double bonded to another carbon that is single bonded to another carbon okay and sorry I'm doing too many here we can see this last carbon he needs three more this carbon needs one uh, only one more this carbon needs two more so this is called propene this is propene we use pro whenever we have three carbons this was for two carbons it's eth three carbons it's pro and one carbon is meth meth is for one carbon okay then the general formula for our canes and our uh, was cnh uh, 2n plus 2 this one is for every carbon so if we have n carbons okay you will see that we have every carbon in the chain has um, two hydrogens okay so if this chain was longer every carbon would have two hydrogens okay so there would be two hydrogens for every carbon but the the carbon one of the carbons will not have two so we would subtract one okay but then the carbons at the ends we would have added one and added one okay but now this one we wouldn't have added it at all so we would have only added that one because this carbon only has two where it used to have three the one on the end he only has two now so we only need to add one we subtract one because there's one carbon in the uh, middle part of the chain that doesn't have one and then we add one because there's a carbon at the end so this is a plus one there so because of that those two just cancel one another so the general formula is for every carbon there's two hydrogens okay so this is uh, more examples this specific one is carbon three hydrogen six okay another example might be carbon seven hydrogen 14 okay these are different represent uh, or molecular formulas for alkenes okay 
the last one of the hydrocarbons that we are going to look at and um, uh, I'm using a word I know you don't know but I'll explain it in a minute is the alkynes okay an alkyne functional group and, and I don't think I've mentioned it but this is a functional group alkanes is a functional group alkenes is a functional group alkynes is a functional group um, so this one is triple bonds at least one triple carbon bond okay so somewhere in the structure I've got one carbon sharing three of his valence electrons with another carbon and um, that means he's only got one valence electron left that he's going to share with a constituent group and this one will share his extra valence with a constituent group again constitu constituent group is just a, a, a number of bonds between carbon and hydrogen or it's just the hydrogen okay, it can represent either an alkene structure um, more correctly referred to as an alkyl okay a l k y l an alkyl is a branch that looks like an alkane okay a branch that looks like an alkane is called an alkyl but more about that later don't worry about it now i shouldn't mention it confuse you okay alkynes get guess what the suffix is okay i n e okay that's why they're called alkynes okay the, um, an example that I'm going to show you is the example of butyne so if I have one carbon connected triple bond connected with another carbon but butyne has four so this would be like that this one still needs three hydrogen 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 sorry I seem to be going skew okay this one still needs two hydrogen and hydrogen and this one you can see he's got all four and then this one only needs one okay and that is called butyne butyne okay now the bu but but is used for four carbons okay then we use but but okay and what would be the general molecular formula well for every carbon you would notice each carbon has two hydrogens okay and we'll get to this to the one on the end just now but everyone has two except this one has none so if I sorry this I shouldn't put two there in so every hydrogen uh, carbon will have two hydrogen but then we must subtract this one he we should subtract two for him and for this one we should subtract one and then for this last one we should add one because he didn't just have two he had three so we should add one so this plus one and negative one cancel again so that here's my general formula and you can see each time um, alkanes had um, for every carbon there was two hydrogens plus two for alkenes there was two hydrogens only so we just subtracted a two and for alkynes there's two hydrogens minus two okay because each time we are losing two hydrogens because the bond that we used to have between two of these hydrogens that used to be here and here that bond is lost okay not really lost but um, made into one bond with carbon and that is why we lose those two hydrogens so we subtract another two okay all these are called the hydrocarbons can you guess why they are called hydrocarbons they called hydrocarbons because they are um, uh, molecules molecules consisting of 
hydrogen and carbon. Okay, they're called hydrocarbons. Okay, and one more thing, this alkanes are called saturated. This is called saturated saturated hydrocarbon. Okay, um, I shouldn't hydrocarbon, and basically what that means is each carbon has the maximum number of hydrogens possible. Okay, so for example, the carbons on the ends have three, and the carbons in the middle have two. Okay, that means that all of my available, or, or, um, uh, I have, I can't get, none of these carbons can get another hydrogen. However, these are called unsaturated. Alkenes and alkynes are called unsaturated. Why? Because there are some carbons that if I could break this extra bond between them, I could add an additional um, hydrogen there. So for example here, if we could break this bond here, we could add an additional hydrogen to each of those. So he can add two more hydrogens to this structure and we can add four more hydrogens to this structure. So they are called unsaturated. Unsaturated hydrocarbons. And that is all that um, I will have time for in this lesson. Um, I hope you found this and this these are the, the simplest functional groups that we are going to look at but there's a few more um, but I hope you found this useful and uh, actually simple to understand in the next video we'll look at the uh, uh, at some of the more complicated hydrocarbon um, functional groups sorry about that I'll see you there